Hello everyone and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode we're going to be covering leet code number 70, climbing stairs. This is classified as an easy problem. So we'll start by reading the problem setup here. You are climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? So basically we're given a staircase of unknown length and there's two ways we can go about climbing it by one stair at a time or by two stairs at a time and how many different ways can we get to the top given that we have those two options for how many steps we take. And they have a couple examples here. If an input value of two, so a staircase that's too tall, how many different ways can we get to the top? Well, the output is two, so I guess there's two different ways, and these are the ways. We can take one step, then one step, or two steps, one. So the, the only two ways to do it. And then the other example is an input of three, so a staircase of three stairs, and the output is three, so that means there must be only three ways to do that. I guess we can do one step, one step, one step. So that's going to work for any length of staircase. And then the other two ways are one step, then two, or two steps, then one. And we're also given this extra constraint here. The number of stairs is between 1 and 45 inclusive. So we're not going to have to deal with super long staircases, so that is helpful to know. Now let's pull over to the code editor to start working on this problem. But before we actually start coding anything, I'm going to pull up a whiteboard here so that we can think through how we should even approach this problem. So let's see if I can get that to come up here. So let's start by writing down some of the values we already know. A staircase of length one, we were given, that only has one way of ascending it. A staircase of two, we were given by the problem, there's only two ways of doing that. In a staircase of three, there's three ways. So those are some initial values that we already know. Now, let's think about a staircase we don't know, the next most simple one, which would be a staircase of four. So let's draw that out here. Here's a staircase with four stairs. And now we can just walk through the different ways we can even do this. So we can do one, 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 one. That's one way to get to the top. We could also do two, two. That's two ways to get to the top. And then we have various combinations of one and two steps. So we could do one, two, one. That's three ways. We could do one big step first and then two little ones. That's four ways. Or we could do the two little steps first and the one big step at the end. That's five ways. And I believe for four, that's the, those are the only options. We did all small steps, all big steps, and then each combination of three different possibilities where we take one big step and the other little step. So that seems for four, then the output should be five. So what are different ways we could think about trying to code this up? Well, we could try to do something where we actually generate every single possible sequence that gets us to the top. We could have generated those five different possibilities just like we did by hand here. We could try to do that in code. And then after we've generated every possible sequence, we could just say how many sequences have we generated and that would be the answer. The problem there is that that could be a pretty slow running algorithm depending on how fast this sequence grows with the input size n. If it was only growing at the size of n, well, maybe we could do that, but already four, but already five is bigger than four. So this is going to be something that's going to grow faster than the input size, which means if we're starting to get long staircases, there's going to be many more possibilities than the length of the staircase. And that means that if we write something that tries to generate all possibilities, like a brute force solution, that's probably going to be too slow to solve this problem. So we need some deeper insight into the structure of the problem to solve it in a better way. And the key insight to have here is that for any size staircase, in this case, the four size staircase, to get to the top, there's only two ways that we can get to this fourth stair. We can either get there from here, the third stair, 
and take one step, or we can get there from the second stair and then take the two step jump. Those are the only two ways that we can end on this final stair. So basically that provides a way to break down this four stair problem into two smaller sub problems. Basically the number of steps it takes to get to stair four should be the combination of the possibilities that lead to it. So the only way to get there is either from here or here. So that means the number of possibilities to get to four should just be the sum of the number of possibilities to get to two plus the number of possibilities that lead to three. And those two things together should result in the amount of possibilities to get to four because those are the only things that lead directly to four. And we can see in our little tree of values we've been writing out here that we can see that is the case in the results we have so far. For instance, three, the value for three was just equal to the two previous values added together. And the value for four here was just equal to the value of the two previous ones added together. So the next one here, we could do a calculation. Five should just be equal to the two previous ones. So three plus five. So that should have eight possibilities. And six would then have 13 possibilities. Seven would have 21 and etc. All we have to do is add up the two previous steps. So when we know that, we can generate up to any number staircase n just by starting from the beginning ones that we know and calculating forward. So now that we have a handle on how the problem works better, we should be able to code up a relatively simple solution to do this. All we need to do is make a loop that goes up to our target value, calculate all of these intermediate values by adding the two previous ones, and then once we reach the final value, return it. So let's pull back to the code now so that we can implement our solution. So all we need to do is start off with a dictionary containing the solutions we already know. So we'll say path equals a dictionary. It's going to contain all the sequences we already know. So we know one stair is one, two stairs is two, and three stairs is three. And then we need to make a for loop up to what our target value of stairs n is. So say for x in range 4 to n plus 1, because we need to get all the way up to n. So basically, we're, we're starting at 4, because if it's less than 4, then we know it's something we already know the answer to. This for loop will just be skipped, and it will return the answer anyway. So we're going, if we see a staircase that's 4 or longer, we'll go take steps all the way up to the length of the step staircase. And for each of those steps, we'll calculate how many possibilities there are to get to the top of it based on the values of the two previous ones that will be stored in our dictionary. And then we will store our new value in the dictionary so that we'll have it there to calculate the next one. So we have to store here path x. So this new stair value is going to be set equal to the previous two stair values, which would just be x minus 1 and x minus 2. So for the case of four, a four stair staircase here, this is saying how many ways are there to get to that? Well, we saw before that it's the number of ways to get to three plus the number of ways to get to two because those are the only two positions that you can directly get to four from. So this for loop should do the necessary logic to calculate the number of possibilities to get up each staircase length all the way up to n. So all we have to do at the end then is return the path or the number of steps it took to get up to the staircase of length n. We did end up calculating and storing every intermediary length staircase as well. So if this was something where we were having to do repeated calculations, we could perhaps try to make use of that already stored dictionary to spit out an answer even faster and not have to redo some of this work. But for this problem, we wouldn't have to do that. We just have to return path n. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit on this one. Hopefully we did not make any mistakes. So let's pull over and check the result here as long as we didn't make any mistakes. 
our code ran in 32 milliseconds, was faster than 64% of other Python 3 submissions. So a reasonably decent solution with the other ones that have been accepted here. Now, if you know a lot about other sorts of programming problems, you might have noticed when we were on the whiteboard calculating these different values that the sequence here that we're working with is actually what's called the Fibonacci sequence. It's the sum of the two previous things in the chain. So if you notice that this is actually just a Fibonacci sequence progression is, what's fall, is what fell out of this stair counting problem, you could probably find some algorithm for efficiently calculating the Fibonacci sequence based on the actual math instead of doing this kind of more algorithmic way of doing it. So if, if you knew something like that, you might be able to even code up a solution that was faster computationally than this one, because our solution was an O of N solution, which means the amount of time it takes to run scales up linearly with the input size. But if you knew the underlying math and formulas for the Fibonacci sequence, you might even be able to come up with something that is faster than linear. So I hope you found this explanation useful. Thanks for watching and keep coding.